Welcome to the heart of Port Albert Steelworks. Behind us are the two converter vessels where iron is turned into steel. I'm joined here today by Andrew Thomas, who's a project lead for the replacement of one of these converter vessels. Andrew, thanks for bringing us down here today. Now tell us, why has this uh, converter vessel got to be changed? Well, it's been in operation now since 1992, so that's 30 years of operation, and it's generally time now to, to change it. We changed out Converter 2 back in, well, it was commissioned in 2019, now it's the time for Converter 1. And that's a long old stretch, 30 years, isn't it? And I know we kind of know these things make about 300 tonnes of steel at a time, but has anyone kind of added up on the back of a fag packet how, many steel, how much steel this vessel has made in its life? Yeah, well over 30 years, a quick calculation would be 57 million tonnes. Uh, so quite impressive. So it's, it's done its duty to be fair. Now, I know this project is uh, just been approved uh, and so it's still on the drawing board. When's it all going to happen? So part, well, the design phase, we've already engaged with the OEM. So the design phase is starting right now. Uh, we should start to see equipment coming to site towards the end of 2023. That'll be October, November time. Uh, we will look at commissioning the vessel starting in May 2024 and final commissioning in July 2024. Yeah, so there's a long way to go. And I remember a few years ago when they replaced Vessel 2 here, they opened up this whole stage, didn't they? But I guess at the time they had the advantage that this one's on the, on the cold end of the, the, the stage, might I add, I say. But, but Vessel 1 yeah. is going to be changed when Vessel 2 is still operating. And what people may not be able to understand is that the, the, the hot iron the, that comes from the blast furnaces is going to have to come across the face of that vessel to still feed Vessel 2. How's that going to work? So that, that's the big change with this one. So what we're going to do this time, we're going to actually leave the stage floor in place. That will allow people to work underneath the vessel without being disturbed every every half an hour for the ladle passing. So that is the major change to how we did this one. Yeah, and what's the major milestones? You've got a year, I guess, to plan it. Uh, but what are the sort of major pieces of activity uh, that are going to lead up to that piece of work? So the, the, the big one is uh, the, the design phase now. There, there are some subtle changes with it. Uh, we've also got a, as we got a different installation methodology as well, we've now got to sit down with the installation contractor, which we haven't awarded yet, but we will do. Uh, and that, you know, that's the, that's the big change, the way we did Converter 1. Yeah, it's a big project. And uh, listen, Andrew, thanks for your time. I'm just going to bring in Steve. Steve Lott is a, a former apprentice, aren't you, Steve, who started, I think, in Trostra. First big project for you here in a steel plant, uh, Steve. Uh, what's your role in the project? Uh, so as a project engineer, we've had to split the uh, work up into multiple parts. So some of the work that comes under my scope will be to bring the vessel in from the docks, which is about a mile away. Um, they'll be offloaded onto an SPMT and then um, so we'll bring it all the way to the steel plant here, which is full of challenges due to the yeah. size of it. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember last time they brought it, uh, they had to, to work out all the roads, the heights of the bridges, all that sort of stuff. I think they even used virtual reality to make sure it fit. Now this is going to be quite a squeeze, isn't it? Yeah, there's, lo there's lots of uh, structures you need to take down, um, pipe work, some bridges will have to come down as well, so it's not going to be straightforward. And then when we bring it in site, uh, some of the other work I'll be doing is uh, the bull gear, the design and installation of that, and also the fume exhaust, the ductwork. Yeah, it's all in the planning, I guess. And somewhere, we were talking earlier in the offices about this project, and someone said that when you put in a vessel in, in place, there's literally a matter of a couple of inches either side. Yeah, I think the closest uh, we come to steelwork when we install it is uh, 50 millimetres. So it is, it's tight margins, really. Yeah, so how are you feeling about it all being involved in such a big project? Um, it should be interesting. Uh, <laughs> we've got a good team, I think, so yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, excellent. Listen, thanks very much, Andrew. This is a big, big project. I know it's a year away, a uh, lot of planning to go. Uh, how confident are you it's all going to go on plan, on budget, and we'll get back to, to full operation? Because you've got a single vessel in that time as well, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had a hell of a lot of learnings from Vessel 2. We've taken them on board now, so I'm pretty confident that we're going to bring this, you know, we're going to do it in the 80 days. Uh, for Converter 2, we took 90 days, and I'm confident we'll do it. Now, the other thing we were talking about, if I can just go on a little bit more earlier, was about the, the additional technology, the new technology we're going to introduce as part of this vessel, uh, new vessel replacement. Tell me a bit about that and what will, what will it do for us? I think the biggest change will be the, the BAP system, which is the agitation uh, part of the vessel. 
Uh, we're now putting in 12 tweers. That allows us to um, create higher quality steels, uh, better for the business. It gives us more scope in what we can manufacture here. So I think that's a big change. So it is another amazing project. The scale is absolutely enormous. You don't realize until you are very close up how big it is. Uh, the guys earlier were saying not only the weight of this vessel and the weight of the bricks, but when they reline it, the safety lining and the, and the normal lining is about 30 odd thousand refractory bricks to go in. I think there's lots of ancillary equipment going around it, the trunnions and the doghouse and the new doghouse doors. You talked, I think, about automating the doghouse doors. Uh, is that a safety feature or is it a, a product efficiency one as well? Um, I more more, more safety especially on the tapping side at the moment those doors are pulled open manually so we will change them into semi-automated sliding doors yeah, yeah yeah so like I say it's a massive project yes it's a year away but it just goes to show how much planning is required for something of this scale all the very best of luck to both of you and the project team um, we'll certainly come back nearer the time when it's happening and, and definitely when you're actually putting it in place we can't wait okay look forward to that Tim thanks very much